Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there is a ton of news stories to get into today. So let's talk about the world of Impact Wrestling. Let's talk about a major, major injury to a major player on the Impact Wrestling roster. That being former Impact World Champion himself, Sammy Callahan, because he has reportedly suffered a broken ankle and will be out until at least the spring of 2022. Really bad story here. Now, Sammy Callahan reportedly suffered a broken ankle at Saturday's Impact Wrestling television tapings and is expected to be out of action until next year. Now, there's no word yet right now at the time of recording as to how the injury occurred, but Callahan is reportedly undergoing surgery or already has had the operation. This is according to F4WOnline.com. Now, he's expected to be out of action until the spring of 2022. Now, Callahan, of course, worked the pre taped Victory Road special on Saturday night, teaming with Eddie Edwards from for a loss to Moose and W. Morrissey. Callahan and Edwards did not work Friday's Impact Wrestling television tapings and we're still waiting right now on an update as to what happened to him at Saturday's tapings. Now, Callahan himself, at the time of recording right now, hasn't commented on the injury at the moment, but of course, once he does, we'll cover it here on the channel. There's going to be some really big Impact Wrestling videos coming up on the channel over the course of the next few days. And it's just, it's a, it's a real, once I heard this story yesterday... It sucks. I mean, it, it, that's just just it. it. Absolutely sucks. Callahan re-signed with the company in December last year. He's an Impact Wrestling guy. I think he said so himself. He has no desires to to go anywhere else. He's is an Impact Wrestling guy through and through. He's been with the company for a long time. Former world champion. I mean, for me, it says at this point how much faith that Impact Wrestling has in Sammy Callahan is that the spot that the company put him in for Slammiversary. And I was, I wouldn't say critical. I thought that there could be bigger people to have a bigger match against Kenny Omega for the Impact World Championship uh, earlier this year at Slammiversary, especially for a, a, a pillar event like Slammiversary that a lot of people are going to be watching. But I'm more than happy to say I was massively proved wrong, massively proved wrong in that event. And Sammy Callahan and Kenny Omega delivered an absolutely terrific, terrific main event, no disqualification, whatever they've called it in the end. It was tremendous, and Callahan's just that guy that, you know, he might not be pretty on the eye, and he might not have the most refined pro wrestling ability in the ring in terms of, uh, you know, arm drag, submission holds, etc., but my word is he's got charisma, and he's entertaining, and in the in the universe of Impact Wrestling, <laughs> I don't want to say universe that much because it reminds me of WWE Universe, but in the world that is Impact Wrestling, on that broadcast, in that in the impact zone with that crowd, Sammy Callahan's super, super over. And he's a big deal in the world of impact. And it's a massive, massive loss. Now, I don't know what they're going to do in terms of Callahan's presence on screen for the next however long it takes for him to return. Because given that Sammy's, you know, real ability, arguably, is his ability to talk and his ability to be a character and his ability to cut a promo... Just because he suffered the broken ankle doesn't necessarily mean he has to be off of Impact Wrestling Television. But, you know, a broken ankle, it's no joke. It's no joke. We don't know the severity of the break as well. We just don't know that much details around it. All that we know is he suffered a broken ankle. He's had surgery and he's going to be out of action for a while. They're saying spring of next year. So when they say that, you think of... March, April, May 2020, certainly he's going to miss Bound for Glory, which again sucks because there's no doubt he'd have been majorly involved in that. Now... I think he was going to be in the main event or anything like that. But certainly going back to Vegas, there could have definitely been a possibility for another match against Ken Shamrock, if that's something they're interested in pivoting to. There's lots of different things that they could have done with Sammy Callan. And I'm sure they did have plans for him because, again, he's a featured part of the show. He's a major, major, major part of the Impact Wrestling roster. And to see anyone go down with injury, let alone a featured guy like Sammy Callahan, it really does suck. And... Again, I don't know what plans would have changed, but surely plans would have changed involving Callahan uh, going into Bound for Glory. And now it looks like he's obviously going to miss Bound for Glory. The next major, well, there's a couple of major events he's probably going to miss now. He'll miss Bound for Glory. He'll miss Hard to Kill in January. The, the one after that would possibly be Rebellion in April. And that would be the time you would hope that maybe he can come back. Uh, at that point, but it might be after that as well. And again, it just, it really, really sucks because he is a real featured member of the Impact Wrestling roster and he's a, a big part of the program. So again, I don't really know what they'll do going forward with him. I think, I, I do think there is a possibility he could remain on television, not immediately, but I think he could return, say, to Impact Wrestling on Access TV broadcast in 
I don't know, a couple of months' time, once he's uh, once he's able to travel. I certainly don't want people to be traveling right after surgery, right after the injuries or anything like that. That's how really, really serious stuff happens. But uh, there certainly could be a possibility that he could be involved. I mean, Sammy Callahan's an entertaining guy. Who? Why couldn't he have his own, I don't know, talk show segment? Or why couldn't he be, you know, the crazy guy in a wheelchair or something like that? I mean, you could do some really fun stuff. Like, imagine this. You could have Sammy Callahan who's got a broken ankle, he's in a wheelchair, and he can't, again, he can't He can't do anything because he's in the wheelchair, and that's how you bring Ken Shamrock back, and Ken Shamrock was his enforcer anyway, but now he's legitimately his enforcer because Callahan can't do anything because he's got one leg, and then Ken Shamrock beats the hell out of people. That's, that's entertaining. That's very, very entertaining. So there's certainly stuff they could do. Um, but again, I think I, I do feel for him because he was doing arguably some of his best work, certainly some of his best work that he's done in Impact Wrestling uh, with his feud with Kenny Omega and him being involved in major matches and major angles like he was over the summer. So it really does suck for him. And I, and I do feel for him. So fingers crossed he can make a speedy recovery, but it does look like he's going to be out for a while. Now, before we move on to the next story here, spoiler warning, massive, massive spoiler warning about uh, a name that did return at the latest Impact Wrestling television taping. So we'll give you a five second warning five four three two one okay let's talk about it because the impact wrestling television taping saw the return of former tna original himself christopher daniels yes the aew wrestler christopher daniels returned to impact wrestling for the first time since 2014 yes daniels made his first impact wrestling appearance in over seven years now we had heard reports, Fightful Select, which of course is Fightful's Patreon service, had reported over the weekend that Daniels was backstage at the show. He was seen backstage at the show. Now, if you're not familiar, at the moment, Christopher Daniels, of course, not just being, he's more of a part-time wrestler at this point. He was doing the SCU tag team with Frankie Kazarian in AEW. Of course, they split up after they lost to the Young Bucks. Actually, Daniels actually suffered a really bad eye injury at the time. It was a cut above his eye, led to a black eye, and his eye was bloodshot red. I mean, as of... Like two or three weeks ago, it was still completely red. It was awful, awful injury. You could see from it fine, but it looked really, really gnarly. I don't know if it's recovered yet or not. Anyway, Daniels, in addition to wrestling sometimes, but very infrequently for AEW, actually works in the talent relations department. I don't know if he's the head of talent relations, but he's certainly heavily involved in the talent relations department for AEW. So he's very much involved behind the scenes because he's, I think he's like 51 or something like that. He's, he's uh, you know, he was... He was an older guy when he won the Ring of Honor World Championship. So, you know, credit to him. Anyway, so there were reports that he was at the tapings in Nashville, Tennessee, in Skyway Studios. Fightful Select first reported that as part of the ongoing working relationship that is between Impact Wrestling and AEW. That old forbidden door has led to another Impact Wrestling uh, legend returning. So the scenario is, and I want to be careful how I say this, because I don't want to give away too much, because even though we are talking about spoilers here, I don't want to say exactly, you know, play by play as to what happened, because I do want to encourage people to watch the show. So essentially, there was an angle whereby Josh Alexander was involved with Ace Austin. After the match, uh, Ace Austin and Madman Fulton attacked uh, Josh Alexander. Christian Cage comes out to try and make the save. Um, They're brawling. It leads to Christopher Daniels returning to help out the good guys and i think that's how they go off the air for one of the set of television tapings or for the episode that they're that they were doing so daniels is back i don't know again because i don't want because i don't want to know i when when we report things about spoilers here i almost want to know as little as information as possible whilst the ability to to report the story but also be surprised when i watch the show if you know what i mean because i'm still a fan at the end of the day so i want to try and toe that line between revealing just enough but not too much so i don't know at this point if Daniels did indeed work a match at the Impact Wrestling television tapings, he, he very, well, very well might have. He very well might have. I don't know. And uh, I'm sure if he has, one, we'll either talk about it when it's on the uh, the episode of Impact Wrestling that it happens, or if we get a report that he indeed did, did, did work the tapings and that report comes out then and I see it, then I'll have to talk about it. But uh, Daniels being involved is great. I, I love this kind of stuff. It's like... You know, Daniels, I mean, of all the names that have returned, whether it was Matt Hardy, who, of course, had a huge, huge influence in Impact Wrestling's history, especially in the dark days of really bringing that company back up, saving it, essentially, uh, from going out of business because of his, you know, the the broken universe with with Matt Hardy, his brother Jeff, and the whole Hardy family, the Hardy compound, etc. He came back. 
Then you had Christian Cage come back. Of course, he's got such a history of Impact Wrestling as well. He's now the world champion for the promotion. You had Frankie Kazarian come back at the last set of television tapings, which is great because Frankie's got such a history with the company as well. Multiple, multiple, multiple time X Division champion, a real staple of the X Division for all those years. And now Daniel's coming back again. What a what a history he has with that. I mean, again, he really truly is a TNA original. Was there since the start just is part of for me is part of the greatest match in impact wrestling history which is the triple threat unbreakable match which is aj styles daniels and samoa joe for the x division championship just you'll you will struggle to find a better triple threat match ever in history in my opinion certainly the one i've seen there might be better ones out there but that's my favorite match it's certainly an impact wrestling history it's right up there because it's just sensational it's absolutely fantastic so he was part of that multiple time x division champion Multiple time tag team champion with AJ Styles. I think back to Daniels uh, and Styles' feud with LAX back in the day. I think to um, obviously Daniels and and Frankie Kazarian as bad influence in Impact Wrestling too. And Daniels actually was one of the people that portrayed suicide for a brief period of time. I forget the order. I forget the order in which it happened. I think it might have been. I think it might have been Daniels first. That was suicide. Then Frankie Kazarian. Then other people that portrayed him. I think that might have been the case. It might be the other way around. But certainly he was one of the names that did play suicide for a while. So he's been in Impact Wrestling a ton of different times. Of course, has so much history of the company. So seeing those names finally come back to impact through this working relationship with AEW is always just so entertaining to see. And I think that's what people want to have this working relationship. You know, initially having Kenny Omega there and those names coming in was fun. And you do still hope that you can get a, a Young Bucks to come back because of their history with the company. But you do also think of names that maybe haven't ever appeared in Impact Wrestling that could because of the relationship they have with AEW, whether it's like a Chris Jericho or a John Moxley or a CM Punk, because of course he was technically in TNA back in the day, right? Or Brian Danielson, those names, Darby Allen, maybe having those names show up would be very exciting. But I think for me, what's more exciting are the names that come back that do have a ton of history with the company, like Christopher Daniels, like Frankie Kazarian, like Matt Hardy. I think that's the 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 way that I would really like to see this relationship go in the future. Gone are the days of getting these top, top main eventers in. I think the really exciting thing is getting the names back in that universe that really means something. Like, I really hope, and I don't know if this will happen or not, I really don't, but considering it feels like AEW Sting's last hurrah, even though he's wrestling and he's just amazing, you know, I can, I, I'm very, was very, very happy to be proven wrong by Sting's ability to still go at the age of like 62 or 63, however old he is, he's in tremendous shape. But Sting, Sting's another one that he has so much history with impact wrestling so much history he was on the first anniversary show multiple time impact world champion nwa world heavyweights champion just part of so many just illustrious moments in the company's history and certainly was involved at the company's peak that getting like sting if it was just one appearance whether it was bound for glory or whether it's whatever it is having sting come back would just be a big dude doesn't have to wrestle just for him to be involved in him to maybe you know cut a promo and come out as joker sting which was tna specific back in the day all that kind of stuff is just, i think as a as a long time impact wrestling fan that means more yes it's exciting if again jericho or moxley showed up but I think the names that have so much history with Impact Wrestling, which there are plenty on the AEW roster that have a ton of history with Impact, those names coming back kind of means more or just feels better, doesn't it? So I'm really, I was really happy to see Daniels come back, but I don't know if this, what it will lead to, how long he'll be there. I would assume it's probably just for this taping, but who knows? Anything is possible. And it's, uh, it's very, very exciting. Uh, let's switch gears here, talk about Tommy Dreamer. Of course, a lot of people talking about Tommy Dreamer. Of course, he's been suspended by Impact Wrestling because of his comments on Dark Side of the Ring. But it isn't only Impact Wrestling that have removed Dreamer from their programming because yesterday on the Busted Open radio show, host Dave LaGreca commented on the statements made by Tommy Dreamer on the most recent episode of Dark Side of the Ring regarding Ric Flair's conduct on the plane ride from Howe. Now, the LaGreca did not hold back from criticizing Dreamer, one of the three co-hosts of Busted Open Radio, saying that his remarks would not be tolerated. This is what LaGreca had to say. And, he, and again, he didn't hold back. And fair play to Dave LaGreca. He said, quote, I felt I needed to start off today's show to talk about a few different things. I'm still quite frankly shocked by what Tommy said. 
I think it was definitely out of character of the Tommy that I know who has been hosting this show for a few years now. And I can't and will not defend the comments because they're indefensible. Quite frankly, Tommy, the things that Tommy said, Tommy effed up. Tommy effed up on Thursday. And what he says is insensitive and won't be tolerated. A lot of people will say, well, in 2021, you can't say this. It doesn't matter if it's 2021, 1998, 1985. It doesn't matter. As a father, as a husband, knowing my daughter now has just turned 18 and she's about to go out into the world, is going to start going to college soon and is now working. These are things that I worry about for my own family. And people have had to worry about this for a year and there's just no effing place for it. There really isn't. There's no place for this type of thought process, these types of comments, these types of actions. I'm not throwing this all on Tommy. Tommy made some insensitive remarks on Thursday. And as I said, they're not going to be tolerated. And again, I, can't, I don't know if I could put it better. I mean, Dave LeCrecker is a much better broadcaster than I. And I really don't know if I could put it better. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people have been saying about the Tommy Dreamer stuff is, you know, make no mistake, the... the the allegations are against Ric Flair and and Scott Hall and Brock Lesnar and uh, etc. And they're the people that should be really focused on. But Tommy Dreamer's thought process and, and remarks that he made kind of sum up the general reaction to this kind of stuff and why that needs to change and why there's such a problem with victims coming forward and putting these things out into the open because people say that oh you're just you're you're, you're lying or um, it's boys being boys or you're you're over you're over hyping things etc and a lot of people have said and it's true Tommy Dreamer's got daughters would he say the same thing if that was about his daughters of course he wouldn't and it's that's the insensitivity that we're talking about here now Lagreca also addressed Dreamer's future with Busted Open Radio Show while he stopped short at firing Dreamer he did declare that Dreamer would be pulled from the show until further notice. He said, quote, a lot of people have been looking to us now and what we're going to be doing about Tommy and Tommy's future. As far as Tommy's future on Busted Open, for the time being, he's off the show. How long? I don't know. I don't know how long Tommy's going to be off the show. I think he needs to take some time. I think he needs some time to reflect and understand how his comments hurt, how his attitude hurt. And I don't know if, if you can put a timetable on that. So if you're looking for that, I don't have an answer. But for the time being, Tommy's going to be off Busted Open. Of course, that comes after Tommy Dreamer being suspended indefinitely by Impact Wrestling. Now, Dreamer himself has released a statement about this. He released it a couple of days ago and uh, addressed his comments on Dark Side of the Ring. This is what Dreamer had to say on his Twitter account and social media pages. He said, quote, Regarding my comments made on Dark Side of the Ring, it was never my intention to offend, hurt, or victim shame anyone. I understand my comments were insensitive and could trigger emotions in someone's own personal past. I do not condone sexual misconduct of any kind. I apologize to anyone I offended from the bottom of my heart. I am so sorry. Now, I've seen a lot of people react different ways to this. I've seen pro wrestlers such as Chris Jericho and others say forgiven, apology accepted, etc. I've seen some people say you're only saying this because people reacted badly and you don't feel sorry. And there's some people that are saying, I appreciate the apology, but you still said what you said. And I think I think I'm on the latter. I don't know. And, it's, and the reason I say that is because it's not for me. It's not for me and it's not for Chris Jericho and it's not for other people to accept, accept his apology. It's for the victims out there to accept his apology. It's for the woman involved to accept his apology. Who cares what I think about Tommy Dreamer's apology because I'm not the one affected in this situation. I can have my opinion, but in reality, it really doesn't matter. I'm not the one, again, that's had to deal with this kind of stuff. Other people are. And again, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, what I do know is um, I myself thought the comments were reprehensible. Um, and it's going to take a lot of time. And I, and I think that's the situation by that. Let's switch gears here and talk about Bound for Glory, because, of course, we now know the main event for Bound for Glory. And it's the one that we've spoken about several times here on the channel, frankly. And that's former X Division champion Josh Alexander has relinquished his championship to challenge Christian Cage for the Impact World Championship at Bound for Glory next month. Now, this was following Cage's successful title defense against Ace Austin at Victory Road on Saturday. Alexander approached Cage in the ring. Alexander stated, bound for glory, option C. I've mentioned this several, several times here on the channel. And proceeded to hold his X-Division title high above his head, indicating he's surrendering his title for a chance to face Cage for his championship. Cage responded by throwing his title in the air as both, both men concluded the show with an intimidating stare down. 
Now, Josh Alexander arguably has one, had one of the best X Division title reigns in recent history. Some of the defenses he's had, whether they're Iron Man matches, guys from New Japan, guys from Impact Wrestling, big guys, small guys, Ultimate X matches, high flying matches, he's done it all. And I've said several, several, several times on the channel, it feels like this has been to build him up. And he's been the guy. I mean, previously I said it would have been Josh Alexander on Moose, but. Over the course of the last couple of months, it's been no its no question. Josh Alexander's the guy. He's the guy to beat the guy from AEW, the big name. I still think it would have meant way, way more if Josh Alexander had defeated Kenny Omega for the Impact World Championship. But they didn't go down that route, unfortunately, for Josh Alexander. But hey, make no mistake, beating Christian Cage in the main event of Bound for Glory is still a big deal. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to beat Christian Cage and he's going to become the Impact World Champion. He's very deserving. I think the... X Division Championship reign has also been a dry run, essentially, to see how he could hold a title and what title reign he can do. And it's just tremendous. It really, really is tremendous. And um, I think he's more than deserving. And I think it's a great main event. It's a main event I'm very excited for. Two Canadians going against each other as well feels like a big deal. And it's just a very exciting time for Josh Alexander. And it's very deserved. And I'm already looking forward to Bound for Glory because it should be a great show with a great main event. And it looks like we're going to see a new Impact World Champion. So very, very exciting. Finally, uh, I've seen a few comments recently on some of the videos asking me about Killer Kelly. What's going on with her? We heard previously that there was a lot of interest from Impact Wrestling for signing Killer Kelly. Well, Impact Wrestling reportedly remained interested in signing Killer Kelly. This is according to a report by Fightful Select. Now, Kelly worked for Impact Wrestling uh, at the company's November 2020 tapings. She faced Kimberly in singles action before she teamed with Renee Michelle in the Knockouts Tag Team Title Tournament. Now, Kelly reportedly made a good impression at the time on Impact Wrestling officials, and Impact were immediately interested in signing her. Now, a number of things, number of things rather, needed to be sorted out first before she could sign, and she was stuck in Portugal after returning home due to the U.S. Embassy being closed for interviews because of the ongoing global pandemic. This ultimately prevented her from returning to the United States until January of this year, as she had planned. Um, and she's only just returned to the United States now. Now, in an update onto her situation at the moment, Fightful Select noted that an impact talent believes the promotion is still interested in signing Kelly, but there are still things that needed to be sorted out first before she can be working for the company. Although she is in the United States, she was not involved at Impact's television tapings on either Friday or Saturday. Um, again, she could have... I, I, don't, I haven't seen a lot of the, the taping notes at the moment, but... Look, I think they are still interested in signing her. It's just a case of this whole visa thing and being stuck in different countries. It's the problem of, of travel in um, in pro wrestling. If you're not, you know, travel between countries during the pandemic has been very difficult. Unless you've got exemptions, which is athletes or, you know, media, etc. It's very tough. And I think that's the problem for, for Killer Kelly. Again, I think she'll suit great in Impact Wrestling. She did when she was there previously. And I do expect Impact to sign her eventually. It's just this bureaucratic stuff that they've got to keep going through. But I do think they will sign her eventually. But look, guys, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on all of these Impact Wrestling news stories we've spoken about today? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about Impact Wrestling, WWE, AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community, drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Got the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. Previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.